This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys, Vincent here from the CreativeDojo.net. This is Dojo TV where we talk about all things motion design and visual effects. A lot of stories to cover today. So our first story comes from Clinton Jones, AKA Punisher, who we talked about last time in the last episode. But he shares with us a tip that he learned from Andrew Kramer himself on how to create cinematic motion blur in After Effects. So basically he brings in a shot into After Effects and he does some fine little, you know, fine post tweaking to really tweak the highlights and really sell the effect that your shot was shot on a high-end camera, on high-end lenses. Anything that we can do to really enhance the production quality and the, the aesthetic value of what we're getting is always good, even if it's in post. So a really much handy, nice little quick tip from Andrew Kramer through Clinton. Awesome stuff, really great little quick tip. Check it out. Our next story is from Plugin Everything. We talked about them a lot in the past as well. Basically, they're teasing us with a new free plugin that hasn't been released yet. It's called Displacer Pro. And basically, it's a fast and easy alternative to displacement maps and distortion. So if you're familiar with like turbulent displays or displacement maps in After Effects, you know, it's a very popular way to distort things based on black and white values and all that stuff. And so basically he's created a newer version, a new alternative to it, um, which will allow you to pretty much not just animate things and distort things based on the translational data, but also rotation, scale, and some other factors. And this is gonna be a free plugin. I'll let you guys know when it comes out soon, but it looks pretty cool. Speaking of free, the School of Motion has released a new free course called the Level Up course. And basically the whole goal is to really help you guys or help everyone basically figure out what their next move is in motion design. So they're taking a look at trends in motion design, where the trend is going, where is motion design as an industry going, how to help find your confidence in your work, improve your demo reel, talk about imposter syndrome, take control of your career, how to get your studio gig, your dream job, and how to really just get jobs in general. It's basically like a self-motivation, kind of like a business course to really help gear your mind towards the industry and really improve your, you know, your set of skills and kind of like your approach in the industry as a whole. It's a really great course. It's not a technical course where you'll be talking about like, you know, buttons and after effects in Cinema 40, but there's a lot of cool stuff in there like PDF guides and podcasts with industry professionals. Um, it's a really cool course. Check it out from School of Motion. Again, it's an absolutely free course. Speaking of School of Motion, they also have a kind of like a workflow podcast overview video on Cavalry. I know you guys always make fun of me. I know it's not Calvary, it's Cavalry. Um, I, know I you know, when you say it really fast, it kind of all sounds the same. But basically, they have a video on it, kind of walking through the workflow. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with that, that um, Cavalry is kind of like a new and upcoming program software that's kind of like somewhat like an After Effects alternative, but not quite. It's basically a more procedural, non-destructive version of After Effects, really geared for motion design and motion graphics. Really cool stuff. Watch their overview over there. And again, they have another workflow kind of like podcast interview um, talking with Zach Lovett and Noah Honig. Um, Zach is a good friend of mine. And basically talk about expressions and After Effects and how they can be useful. So if you're into expressions, if you want to you know, get to know Zach and know a lot more, this is a cool little podcast to kind of see um, technical sides of expressions and scripts and you know all the technical sides of After Effects. So check it out again from School of Motion. Awesome stuff. Before I go any further, I want to thank our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the number one platform to create an amazing website, whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have amazing things to choose from, fully customizable so you can make it the way you want it to look like, without having any coding knowledge required. They have awesome 24-hour support, and best of all, if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order and support the DOJO, so check it out over at squarespace.com slash DOJO. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. Now the folks over at Motion Array released six new plugins. Now these are not actually free plugins, uh, but they are new plugins. And basically they're kind of like a little accessory stylizing of plugins like bad signals, camera shakes, chromatic aberration, RGB offset, flickering, and sort of like the slasher motion graphic type plugin. Um, so these are not free, but they are included in your Motion Array subscription level. So if you are a Motion Array subscriber, um, so this is just more plugins for you guys, which is great. But at the same time, don't forget, we talked about their free transition pack for Premiere Pro in the past episode. Um, so you can download this for free for Premiere. So check those out over at Motion Array. Next, we have a really nice overview tutorial from Jonas Pills talking about node-based materials in Cinemore 4D. It is basically a overview on working with nodes, different node categories, and the most popular important data types. He'll talk about the overall general power of using a node-based material workflow, and he'll kind of show you guys how to create really incredible setups and easy to use interfaces and really set up you know, nice materials using the node-based material workflow. This is a great, fantastic primer if you're kind of new to node-based materials in general, uh, which is very popular in the 3D scene, so definitely check that out. 
Speaking of Cinema 4D, they recently released Cinema 4D R23. There's a lot of improvements to R23, including a lot of character animation stuff and just animation stuff in general, UV editing, viewport display and asset exchange. Lots of interesting, cool stuff. But as you guys know, last year, Red Giant and Maxwell kind of merged together to create this weird conglomerate company. But basically they've integrated Magic Bullet looks into Cinema 4D. Yes, you heard that right. And so you can apply all the 200 preset films, import LUTs, and add all the stylizing effects from Magic Bullet looks directly within Cinema 4D, which is a little weird, but you know, whatever. They're trying to integrate the technologies together. And they introduced something called Maxon One, which is a new subscription package, which includes Cinema 4D, Redshift, and the Red Giant Complete, which is pretty much everything that Red Giant creates. And you know, this is pretty cool because it kind of shows the merging of the company and their products. And the pricing is actually not too bad if you're actually in the industry. So it's 149 US dollars per month if you're on a month to month basis, or if you're subscribed for an annual membership, it's about a hundred dollars a month for, and that includes Cinema 4D, Redshift and Red Giant Complete. So that's a pretty big package. And I think this is really appealing for a lot of Cinema 4D and After Effects users who primarily use Cinema 4D, Redshift, and you know, you get the whole Red Giant suite. So that's pretty cool there. Lastly, I don't know how new this is, but I recently hopped onto Adobe Color, which used to be called Cooler. And it seems like they've updated their website in the time that I've been there last. So basically it's a lot different now. The theme is completely different. They've really structured and organized the site to where you can see more visual themes. Um, it's organized a little bit differently. There are also still trends you can look at, which subdivides color palettes and schemes based on various trends like fashion, graphic design, illustration, interaction. So this is a great way to explore new color palettes and color schemes. And it really makes it more fun to kind of dive into certain sectors and certain types and styles of work and see what kind of palettes they're using. I kind of just wish that they still had like the top 100 palettes or whatever, just so I can quickly go and just kind of see a bunch of top palettes. But this is a really nice way to really increase the engagement and really see kind of what's going on in the color palette scheme here on the website. So a really welcome change. Definitely check it out if you haven't checked out the new Adobe Color yet. Again, I'm not sure how new it is. But that's pretty much it for this quick round of Dojo TV. If you guys like videos like this, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment down below telling me. Subscribe for more videos like these. My name is Vincent Wynn from the Creative Dojo and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.